And uh, the next question is from uh, Phil Douglas. Uh, in your manifestos, it was made a pledge not only to protect the NHS from spending cuts, but to increase the amount of extended AG on health. Can you your comments on the local clinical commissioner's proposal to act on 130 nursing jobs from the cross? and propose the dedicated financial award in order to make nationally imposed cost improvement savings. Thank you. Thank you. Well, obviously, um, the funds haven't been properly allocated. Um, so the first thing we'll do, we'll end NSS, NHS privatisation. Um, all the other parties have been encouraged to marketisation and privatisation of the we must keep our NHS free, as Mark Porter Head of BMA recently issued a warning that despite denials, a £10 charge for GP appointment has been suggested. And we will immediately increase NHS spending by £12 billion and increase it annu annually by 1.2%. Under Greens, everyone will get free prescriptions, the extra funding and social care will create 400,000 new jobs. And we will respect the NHS pay review body, bring pay back in line with inflation and negotiate improved conditions so we can attract the nurses and staff we desperately need. We'll stop further PFI initiatives and private finance initiative contracts that Labour introduced and the governments have carried on. And we'll seek ways out to find existing contracts where that would represent good value for money. But also, we'll provide accessible local community health centres that provide a wide range of services, including out of hours care. But these will help people access health care quickly rather than being replacement for a GP. I don't know about you, but I work full time. It takes me days to get through to my doctor, only to be told that I can have an appointment in three weeks' time, or even longer if it's one of the two doctors out of the eight you wish to see. Um, I want to see an end to the bone patient choice that we can give them. Um, but we'll also ensure that cancer outcomes in the UK are the best in Europe. Um, my own father was misdiagnosed by a GP three times after we said we thought he'd got a brain tumour. Um, we even offered to pay for an MRI scan for him. Unfortunately, um, we saw a Danish doctor who was very lucky that they were over here and was diagnosed within 10 minutes. I myself was told I had a tumour, was told I needed a scan, they forgot to put it on the system, had to wait weeks. Um, I had to wait three months for my biopsy where a colleague in Stafford I had to wait two weeks. So we need to end post-COVID treatment health as well. And uh, basically, in terms of the NHS in general, um, we really want to tr treat drug addiction as a health problem. Repeal the Health and Social Care Act of 2012 and introduce the NHS Reinstatement Bill. And we're going to continue to stop fighting TTIP because we don't want the United States system coming over here. Thank you. Thank you very much. The specific question again is um, to do with also the local situation but also the uh, spending plans. Can you keep the focus and uh, concise, please? Darren. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Phil. <laughs> um, certainly, um, we talked about having £8 billion spent on the National Health Service. Um, we've also had the Social uh, Care Act of 2014, which actually comes to, into effect this month, um, where we're trying to link and integrate services between the social side, social care services, and also the NHS. So, key to it is that we don't have these dementia patients and other patients in the hospital. Um, and you'll be familiar with part of the reason why there's so much pressure on the NHS is that people are getting older. Um, yes, we have the, you know, the sort of drunks on the Saturday nights um, who will take up A&E for a while, but it's actually the, um, the, the, the other ones that, that go into the beds after they've gone into A&E and stay there, that caused really the main pressure. I worked in a hospital, I was I provided services for Swindon Hospital um, called Great Western. So I have talked to these people, I've, talk, I've talked about that, and that's what we need, we need to do. We need to get um, people who are in the beds in 
hospitals back into the social care setting where they would prefer to be. And one of the key things out of the Social Care Act is um, the Care Act of um, 2014, rather, is um, carers get employed and they, they get considered in the same way as the as the person being there. <coughs> so they'll get um, they'll get money as a volunteer. So they'll get paid for, for what they're doing, and that's the thing that keeping that's coming so that we can keep people in their environment that they, they're used to being in. That's keeping them there. Obviously, in the NHS more widely, uh, we're going to we're offering we're pledging seven days a week service so that at any time you can get hold of your GP. What does that require? That requires a big injection of doctors and nurses. And we've already shown with our track record with 9,000 new doctors and nearly 7,000 new nurses so far that um, you know, we can keep that momentum going to, 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 to increase that. And that you know, that's what we've done. There you go. Especially as Wolverhampton or New Cross is now taking um, patients from Canic and Stafford as well. Taking from Stafford, by the way, uh, at the end of the day, as a result of Labour's debacle of the Stafford Hospital, uh, which was perpetrated under one Andy Burman, who, I'm amazed, is still Shadow Minister for Health after what happened there, and seems to take no responsibility for it. Um, it is a ludicrous pro proposal, and I think we, sh we should all get together and fight that. Our policy is on health. We raise spending by a billion a year above inflation until 2018. Then raise the budget in line with economic growth, estimated to, to 8 billion a year by 2020. We do it by scrapping the Tory shares for right scheme, increased dividend tax on, uh, on uh, higher high earners, and a tighter cap on pension tax relief on, high, again, higher higher. Now, we have to look at preventative medicine. <coughs> I'm particularly keen to see the, something done about the amount of sugar in our diet. Um, diabetes is soaring out of control. Um, folks, I am one of the type 2 diabetics that you find read about. I'm sure there's a few amongst us tonight. Uh, we have to look at minimum pricing for alcohol. Um, and uh, we have to. Our, our main difference in our proposal is on mental health. Um, my, my dad was a mental health, a psychiatric nurse all his working life, and I, I knew what went on in those days of an asylum treatment. It was appalling. But mental health has been a Cinderella service ever since. It should be taken as seriously as physical health, but it hasn't been. One in four people suffer some mental health problems sometime in their lives, yet only 11% of NHS spending goes on mental health. We will address that. Thank you, Emma. 
Um, thanks for your question, Phil, and to answer it very directly, I'm opposed to the plans that you talk about to act 130 uh, nurses. New Cross is un under severe pressure as it is, and nationally, half of all nurses say that their wards are understaffed. Um, so that's why Labour has put forward a fully costed plan to raise money by taxing those homes that are worth over £2 million um, and also uh, raise a levy on tobacco companies uh, and to tackle tax avoidance by hedge funds to put that money directly into the NHS um, to recruit additional nurses and we've said um, from the first year of, of a future Labour government, we would do that straight away, a particular emphasis on recruiting nurses. The Tories talk about injecting £8 billion pounds into the NHS, but they have no idea where that money is going to come from. We're still in, you know, this is like a magic money tree uh, that the Tories, over a certain number of days, billions and billions and billions, uh, they were supposed to be, you know, they, they talk about fiscal responsibility, but they've been promising billions of pounds in the, in the campaign that we've no idea where it's going to come from. I think it's really important that we invest in new staff. <coughs> I also think it's really important that we reverse the Health and Care Act, uh, Social Care, uh, Care Act, which was driving privatisation in our NHS. And crucially, uh, in terms of social care, there is a huge crisis in social care. And one of the, one of the reasons that we've got people waiting in A&E for more than four hours is because people are being treated in hospital, they're fit to come out, but they need care either in their homes or in a residential home. And they're simply not getting that help because I'm afraid the Tories massively cut local government spending, particularly here in Wolverhampton where deprivation uh, is where we need that spending. On the dementia ward, I want to answer your question very specifically. I don't want to be accused of not answering questions. Uh, on the dementia ward, I, I spent a day um, a, a couple of years ago work shadowing different people, and I actually work shadowed one of the um, health professionals in the dementia ward, and I bumped into one of the doctors only um, this evening when I was out door knocking, and I know that they are under threat. Uh, I will do all that I can to make sure that the dementia ward is kept because they are a trailblazer um, in, in terms of treating <coughs> dementia. Uh, they're ahead of many others across the country, and we really need to make sure that we advance the treatment uh, for dementia because, unfortunately, it is something that is becoming more prevalent and more concerning. So I, um, I'm opposed to both of those plans that you outlined in the question. Thank you all. Bill, uh, any quick response? Any, yes, we've heard mainly about the proposals to national rate from the local situation. If the CCG get their way, and I would be more close, I see what goes on, I go to the board on a regular basis. Um, we're potentially facing a health, health spending cuts rather than increasing spending. I go to the board on a regular basis, I see what my colleagues in the professional work can end up. <coughs> and it worries me if we do lose expertise, 30 nurses, 10 senior nurses going back to clinical, or we always look to the staff and the other clients. Can I make a response to uh, that question, please? please? Uh, what I'm concerned about is this, and, it, and I feel that it must stop this seesaw, financial seesaw that's going on with the National Health Service. That the one party gets in and runs the National Health Service down to the bank. Then another party comes in and has to build it up again. Then it happens again. And it, and it started with the last like, uh, Conservative government who run it down to the bank. The Labour Party built it up. The Conservatives are doing exactly the same again. And now and having then suddenly promising eight billion pounds. It's this financial seesaw effect constantly with the National Health Service, and it's got to stop. Thank you. Can I that? One brief answer to, uh, in, our, in our manifesto, a brief sentence, we propose to take the NHS out of politics and create a non-partisan NHS and social care review. I call all the other parties to, to agree to that. Very briefly, I think we need a long-term strategy um, in terms of 
investment in the NHS and um, stability for the NHS, which is why we set out a 10-year plan, because although in politics we think of political cycles of five years, actually the NHS has got some very long-term challenges that we need to address, and that needs long-term thinking rather than, um, you know, thinking one or two years ahead. And I have to agree that you, I'm sorry, but you can't trust the Tories with the NHS. Under this government, you've seen waiting times go up, a and &E in crisis and a social care crisis. And frankly, the last Labour government uh, invested heavily in the NHS and we saw record levels of um, satisfaction when we left office uh, to find again the Tories running it down. Let's go to Darren and Star and Beck, please. Okay. Um, well, in, in Staffordshire, they'll probably disagree with you about the um, state that you left the NHS in. Um, certainly, one of the key things that when I was working in a hospital, and I, was, uh, I spoke to the strategy manager there at Swindon, one of the key things out of it is that we listen to the health professionals for them, for them to come up with the ideas and tell us how we can run this service the best we can. We all want the NHS, all of us here want the NHS, we're very proud of it. It's, it's something that's a mile around the world and we want to keep it. So none of us are disagreeing on that. Um, in terms of the CESOR, this is what they came up with. The CEO came up with, this is the NHS came up with that figure, eight billion. He said that's what they need to run it for, which is why the, the coalition government have come up with that figure. The question is, can you afford to give that resource? Well, if you have a strong economy, yes. But. Um, I think a lot of the problems we've seen within hospital care has been rise and rise of our population. Now, our things are all costed and looked at by the 10 year census, and projections are made from that. But those projections are never allowed for all of the people who come to it in the UK. And that's where some of the resources have gone, and that's why things are diminishing. As long as we know who and what and how many are coming in, we can control the spending to make sure that hospitals have all the facilities, to make sure that we've got enough nurses and doctors, to make sure we've got enough midwives, and to prevent any more things like running Stafford Acne. Because under the PFI contracts, if we get rid of, so much money goes out of the budget as soon as it comes in to pay the PFIs back. Now, Labour brought those in, the Tories have reversed them, it's a travesty. We're saying there's no PFI in the hospital. And would you bring, would you allow the people in, two and a half million Britain, British people live in Spain and Malta and Cyprus, would you allow them to access uh, their local health services? Is that fair as well? Well, they do, they do under EHIC, however, they all have private health insurance no. as well. Because no. we're all advised on the TV, no. on the morning no. programmes. Go on holiday, you must get insurance. Yeah, I, 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 I was speaking to her, I Peggy to speak to her. Um, yeah, I completely agree with the PFI loans. Um, people don't realise that on those loans, it's sometimes 40% interest that's being paid back. That is critical in the NHS service. But with immigration, the immigrants, you have to remember that they actually put in 34% more tax a lot of the time, whereas we take back. 11% more. So you cannot blame immigrants or people coming over here for the mess of the NHS service. Uh, we saw in the Express and Star yesterday executives of Express Hospital getting pay increases again. So really there needs to be fair wages for all. But don't forget, as I've said, the Green Party would immediately increase spending by 12 billion but we would increase it annually by 1.2%. So you can be secure in the knowledge that the NHS would be taken care of. And we are fighting TTIP quite clearly because that would be the United States system in. And I was with the 38 Degrees campaign on the 1st of March in the city centre collecting signatures to stop the privatisation of the NHS. Thank you. Um, yeah, just, as you just said, I'll take one, one more comment from, from Simon, then we move on to this, I'm afraid.
satisfactory for the patient. For the patient. And that's why they're trusted with looking at sad stats and, and panic as well. Because they're actually doing quite well for the patient. But that is a takeaway from what we need to do. We need to invest in people who know how to do the transformation and do the change and invest the proper amount of money into it and get the job done. And we've got a track record of actually getting the job done. For those